First of all, I'm going to discuss Twitter lists. Twitter lists are highly underused, but they're a really effective and fabulous social media tool. Twitter lists mean that you can segregate your followers into groups. So you can ensure your time spent on Twitter, on social media, is used correctly. So instead of having to go to your Twitter home feed and trawling through all the noise on Twitter, you can go straight to your industry news, your local businesses or potential clients list and engage and retweet and tweet with purpose. Your list can either be public, so people can view and scroll through your list and people get a notification when you've added them to it, so be careful with that one, or it can be private, which is for your viewing only. So now Facebook groups are a similar avenue as Twitter lists, meaning you can engage with a targeted audience at all times, and the time you spend on social media, which is very precious as a business owner, is maximised to its full potential. So Facebook groups mean that you can engage with a targeted audience. Have you ever considered whether a group would be good for your business? Would connecting with your customers on a more personal level prove valuable for your business? Are you often sharing great tips, great blogs, great articles across your social media accounts? If the answer is yes, then a social media group, a Facebook group, would work for your business. Groups are really easy to create. They take just two minutes and they're much easier to build and to manage than a Facebook business page. For example, my Intro Treat business page has around 2,000 likes and took a year and a half to build. My Facebook group called Social Media Discussions um, has now got 1,600 plus members and took just three months to build. So by sharing top tips, blog articles, and always responding to my members' questions, it's grown into a great source of high engagement for my business, and I've created a real sort of community to learn about social media. Now we're going to talk about Pinterest and your Pinterest links. So if you don't know what Pinterest is, if you've never heard of it, or I don't know where you've been, if that's true, <laughs> um, think of Pinterest as an online notice board for your business. So instead of ripping out a photograph out of a magazine and pinning it on your notice board or on your fridge, you pin it online so people can explore it online and then buy it online. So if you are a retail business that sells online, Pinterest is an absolute must for you. But also if you have a service or a product and you want a higher <coughs> online presence, Pinterest is also a must. <coughs> the reason being is that you can link all of your photographs, your pins, directly to your chosen online source. So this can be your website, it can be your Facebook page, your Facebook group, or your latest blog article. This means people can buy or learn more or inquire about your service with just one click. Okay, now we're going to move on and talk about Facebook advertising. Facebook advertising, some people view a bit kind of cynically and think, oh, Facebook just want my money, etc. Actually, targeted Facebook advertising is a really cost-effective and valuable advertising source. Whether your business page has 20 likes or 20,000 likes, it's valuable to you because it means you can promote your posts or your business page to your targeted audience instantly. Facebook allows you to choose the location of your audience, their age, their gender, and most importantly, their interests. So if you promote a post to your targeted audience, which can take a bit of working out to know who is your target audience, it will prove really successful in getting higher engagement, higher likes and shares, and increased website traffic. There's a great um, advertising quote, which is quite relevant to Facebook advertising. It says, nobody reads ads, people read what interests them, sometimes it's an ad. So think about that the next time you um, promote a post or promote your business page on social media. Okay, now the last thing you might not know about social media, it sounds a bit strange, you can promote yourself and promote your business. There's a rule that floats around that 80% of the time you should promote others, retweet others, share others, 20% of the time it should be you. In my opinion, that's to be ignored 
And there's nothing more irritating than scrolling through someone's Twitter and thinking, what do they do? What do they sell? What service do they provide? So you are allowed to promote yourself. However, don't use words such as buy now or shop here. Use catchy statements, rhetorical questions to get people to click on your website link and go through it. So this is one of those social media myths that sort of floats around. Um, and there are a couple of others. One is that people just kind of tweet what they eat, or it's a great way <laughs> for employees to get fired. <laughs> Along my business journey, even though that sounds a bit old school really to me, um, people have said that to me. And they made a decision years ago they weren't setting up on social media. And then they also admit that because of this, they actively search out these articles that display social media in a negative light, such as that person got fired because of a tweet, and that's the exact reason why I didn't set up my social media accounts for my business. This is wrong, um, and their competitors are building relationships with their potential clients, they're increasing their brand awareness, and they're making sales. Social media is no longer just a kind of buzzword or a hot topic. It's an essential part of your marketing strategy for your business and means you can engage with your audience instantly all by kind of clicking on a hashtag or taking part in online networking hours. Social media, now you know about social media and you've learned about some of the tools and things that you may not be utilising for your business, it's now time to consider why your business should be on social media and how you should manage it. So social media equals higher Google ranking, and increased website traffic. It gives you a unique platform to build relationships with other business owners. You can promote your brand awareness and build customer loyalty. And also, it's a great platform to engage with a targeted audience at all times. So to manage your social media, you should have a marketing plan to begin with. You need to know what you want to achieve and how you're going to get there. Secondly, you need to manage your accounts at a high intensity. You need to do it properly or not do it at all. In my opinion, that means it's better to be on one or two accounts that are really right for your business and you can manage really successfully rather than being on six or seven and managing them poorly and then having an overall kind of poor online presence. Lastly, you need to make sure you provide valuable, interesting and engaging content. This will mean your website traffic's higher, you get more engagement, and you build a real online community for your business. Building this community and loyal fans on social media is the key to social media success. So I hope I've given you some ideas and tips and ideas about how to grow your business's social media, and hopefully I've told you a few features that you didn't even know existed. I've got lots of guides on my website, or, of course, I'm always happy to answer questions via my own social media group, which is Intro to Social Media Discussions. Thank you. Wonderful. Smile, be chat, join for networking.